Cynthia, um, welcome to this press conference on this um, Monday afternoon. My name is Noraida Negron, I'm the Communication Administrator for the City of Laredo. We have some new information on the COVID vaccine here in our community and also the allocation. And we will hear first from our Emergency Management Coordinator and Laredo Fire Chief, Mr. Guillermo Hurd. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I apologize for the the video, I'm in my vehicle right now. We're finishing up our TAMIU vaccination drive. Uh, today is our third day. Uh, I know I have to report that in the last uh, three days, uh, we have vaccinated over 3,500 citizens of the city. Uh, we vaccinated every day. We vaccinated over 1,100 uh, Laredoans. Uh, we also concurrently had a vaccination drive at 700 Juarez and 815 Salinas to also vaccinate our vulnerable uh, citizens that do have difficulty moving. So we are working with our partners uh, with this with this uh, vaccination drive. We did partner up with Laredo ER. They did advise us a uh, the day before Christmas that they did receive a large amount of vaccinations and they were waiting to see how to distribute them. We quickly organized with the health department and with our local partners. We did have several school nurses private ambulances, volunteers uh, that helped man this large vaccination drive that we planned in less than one week. Um, I know there has been a lot of confusion and there has been uh, miscommunication. I know during the vaccination process and Richard will have more specifics on it. We were given guidance and then within the middle of, of the process to distribute it, they changed the guidance on it. What we have done as a city is we have started, we are communicating with all the providers that have the vaccinations and we call them, but if not, if they're not available, we go to their facility and then we advise them to follow the proper guidance so we can all follow the, the tiered system that was provided with the state. Um, uh, and within the next couple of, of uh, within this week, I know Laredo ER is receiving another large amount of vaccinations and we are planning already with three local large entities. Uh, and by the end of the week, I should have more information, but three large local entities that are going to do vaccination drives to to provide the community and the city will support them just like we did this large vaccination drive at TAMIU. With that, I will turn it over to Richard. I will turn it over back to Noraida. Thank you so much, Chief. And now we can hear from Laredo's Health Director, Mr. Richard Chamberlain. Good afternoon to everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this Monday afternoon, as we usually do meet earlier in the day, but due to the busyness of the COVID-19 vaccine drive-through that did take place at the university, we did push back this um, no, normal event that we do have um, daily. But with that, as Chief Hurd did mention, we did provide vaccines to more than 3,500 individuals, 3,520 to be exact. Um, so that is a great feat for our community as we begin to address the COVID-19 pandemic by getting vaccines into the into the community. Of course, with the following the guidelines that the state of Texas has provided to us with our Phase 1A and Phase 1B, it, it is important that we continue to follow these guidelines as we know that our most vulnerable over the age of 65 and those that do have an underlying health condition are most vulnerable to COVID-19 disease and mortality, which is why we, we, we decided that we needed to put together this event very quickly to start the process of getting vaccine into the community, into persons. With that being said, I did want to also share with the community that vaccines in the community aren't being hoarded by the facilities that we do have here in town. I want them to, I want the community to know that vaccines are being provided in an expedited manner and that the city of Laredo will be working collaboratively with these organizations to help provide them in a more expedited manner as that is necessary right now to make sure that we are getting vaccines into hundreds, thousands of people often to ensure that we do have a higher level of immunity within our community to be able to protect ourselves from COVID-19. And in the coming days, as Chief Herd did mention, we will be collaborating with three larger entities to be able to host a simultaneous event in the upcoming future to provide max vaccination once again to our community members. 
we at the city of Laredo Health and we at the city of Laredo have made the request to require more vaccines. Unfortunately, due to the allocation process by the Texas Department of State Health Services, the city of Laredo Health Department has not received more than 600 vaccines within the last two weeks. And we ourselves are down to our last 70 that will be allocated tomorrow to the appointments that have been set up to the individuals within our 1A and 1B categories. We have been notified that we will be receiving an additional 500 vaccines here at the city of Laredo, and we will be working on an appointment basis to provide those to those eligible populations. Yet, we are making the request to acquire thousands of vaccines. We do not have a date or, a, or an approval process that has been sent to us about receiving thousands of vaccines. And with that, we are turning to our COVID-19 providers across the city of Laredo that will collaborate with us to provide the large allocations that they might be receiving, utilizing the city's infrastructure, as mentioned, to get these vaccines out to our most vulnerable. With, I will pause there for any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you to our partners. Thank you to Laredo, and thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Chamberlain, for that report. Now we hear from Laredo's Health Authority, Dr. Victor Trevino. everyone, Dr. Rico Trevino Health Authority, and I do want to thank everyone on the call today and everybody's efforts trying to get uh, this campaign done. We're seeing some monumental changes coming our way as we're trying to prevent the collapse of our local healthcare system and making sure that we expeditiously vaccine our community. Now, Texans uh, will allocate COVID-19 vaccines that are limited on supply base only. And our goals is protecting healthcare workers, protecting frontline workers, protecting vulnerable populations, mitigating health inequities, and data-driven allocations, along with geo geographic diversity, and last but not least, transparency. So all these points is our goals. And uh, the concern right now is that we're seeing a decrease on active cases and prim primarily from the Thanksgiving holidays. So we're still seeing that effect. Uh, as we're seeing very little functional capacity in the hospitals to absorb the upcoming cases from the remaining holiday activities, which is Christmas and New Year's. Seeing that we're already above 200 COVID hospitalizations and half of our census is consistently COVID, it's a good time to discuss our ideas to deal with overflow that we're seeing and continue to see as we move forward. So all these things are being worked on and this is something that uh, on a daily basis we've been uh, trying to address and we are in a race against time. And this is a pandemic and we have to realize that we have to get in front of the virus. And uh, with all these measures, uh, I'm sure we can achieve it, but we have to, to be consistent. We have to be on the same page and work as partners. Those are my comments, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Trevino for your report. Now we hear from our honorable mayor, Mr. Pitt Sainz. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Noreva, and thank you, Mr. Partners, for being so patient. Uh, we just uh, ended a meeting with, with basically the providers of the vaccine. We have 15, sometimes I hear 20 now, I hear 15, uh, so there's between 15 and 20. And that brings me to the point, uh, it's a massive undertaking to, to vaccinate our population. The vaccines, as you know, are, are very limited. Uh, and we have these, these private uh, dispensaries, as well as, as you all know, uh, the, the city proper has had, you know, we're the minority, when in fact, people look to us, me as a mayor, the city manager, and of course, council members as well, uh, as to how uh, things are, are being undertaken in our city, and rightfully so. Uh, so uh, what, what I had suggested, and I've been visiting with Dr. Trevino, and I think Dr. Trevino is, is very much in favor of this, and of course, management as well. We need to get better organized. Uh, I've received... A, huge number of complaints, uh, uh, some allegations as well, uh, preferential treatment for some, that people are jumping in the line, uh, and uh, a, a misunderstanding or miscommunication too, I think, from, from the higher up, uh, possibly the state. I also hear that uh, 
the rule is 1A, 1B, but apparently that classification has been uh, construed a little differently by some of the providers. Uh, so hopefully from this day forward, uh, through Dr. Trevino's guidance, uh, we can move forward with, with structure, with a little more structure. Uh, uh, and, and this is, uh, this is expected simply because we've never done this at, at this massive scale. Uh, and, uh, and I applaud the efforts of, of all uh, the uh, providers out there, uh, uh, including, you know, Richard Chamberlain and his staff and, and of course, everyone in, in the health uh, the community for, uh, you know, for providing these vaccines, but we need to get better coordinated. And I think that's an understatement. I think we all, we all have heard that. You all have heard that too as, as, as media folks as well. So uh, uh, starting uh, today, uh, by tomorrow morning, uh, uh, we're we're implementing some some rules by virtue of a of, of an order signed by Dr. Trevino and and uh, and myself as well if need be. Uh, but I think he's more the one that, that carries this this uh, the authority here in this in this moment in time. So uh, basically, what we're saying is is we need to know the inventory uh, to begin with. How many vaccines have been received? How were they dispensed? Uh, what's the expectation of more vaccines? Uh, so the city can have a handle of this because people are, they don't necessarily call them, they call us, they call our health department, they call our manager, they call me as a mayor and say, uh, mayor, where can I get vaccinated? Uh, and then uh, we've been getting some feedback that apparently some have run out and then some may have some, but it, but they're committed to uh, a certain groups based on their interpretation of, of what they thought uh, the, the rules were. Uh, so, uh, this has to stop. Uh, you know, we need to uh, get better coordinated. And, and again, going back to Dr. Trevino and his guidance, uh, you know, we can, you know, we're, we're amply capable of doing that, and, and we will uh, beginning today, if not uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, uh, we can set some some rules. Uh, but uh, primarily, it's knowing inventories, uh, knowing uh, what's what's a uh, well. Primarily, you know, what what has been dispensed, uh, what remains uh, for the following day. And my understanding too is is if, if uh, you know this is for the public at large, uh, it's it's a uh, and it's and and I realize we're you know, trying to you know to, uh, uh, to get this right, uh, but uh, you know we 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 really can't uh, favor one group over the other, uh, and and hopefully these rules will will speak to that as well. Uh, uh, the uh, this uh, preferential treatment now hopefully will end, and uh, and we can adhere to these uh, rules. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, it's uh, these vaccines are owned by the public, uh, and it's and they have to be administered according. My understanding is it's one A is per, it's the uh, the medical uh, the people uh, the frontline people at, at their hospitals, and then you know the one B uh, tier, which is basically sixty five and older, and uh, and then the uh, 16, yeah, depending on the vaccine, 16 or 18, uh, if, if there's the uh, yeah, underlying medical uh, uh, conditions there. But aside from that, I think that's those are the rules, and I think Dr. Thurino can explain that a little, a little more in detail. But uh, not until we hear from the state that we can open it up to to another tier. And yes, there's been, as a matter of fact, that the state you know did open one B tier, you know, did flood uh, these these uh, drive-throughs that, that we've had, uh, and they've been massive. Uh, uh, and I know people are, are anxiously waiting for their turn, uh, but, I, but I would call maybe at, at this point on, on our manager, city manager, uh, we've been discussing maybe an appointment system and how that would work once we get more uh, vaccines. But Mr. Eads, uh, would you uh, care to, to expand on this too and, and the discussions that you and I and the doctor Trevino have been having recently? Sure, thank you, Mayor. Uh, so yeah, so to speak to a couple of different things, uh, yes, and so we saw the same thing. We saw the long lines, and as I stated last week, when we have the list of partners uh, that we've listed off, there are no more partners. I think the numbers fluctuate when we include HEB as a whole as one partner or the HEB pharmacies individually. That's why the number goes up or down, but technically speaking, I believe that there's uh, 11 on the form. So we are one of those providers, the city of 
Lorena, as we uh, explained last week, we're one of the providers. We have received a total of 600 uh, vaccines to begin with. And so we, I, um, what we're trying to do at this point is with whatever we're able to control, I don't oversee the hospitals. I don't want to oversee a hospital. They, they have their own operations. Pharmacies, they have their own operations as well. But the challenge is to uh, oversee a distribution network system that is mandated to the state, not the local government. And so I don't have any authorities, not me as a city manager, I don't have any authorities over a CEO of a hospital. I don't want authority. Um, but when I'm being tasked with trying to set up distribution networks, I cannot do that if I don't have authority over the network and all the resources. And so we, we, we are trying to implement ways to be able to get oversight of these resources because I can only schedule appointments for vaccines that I have oversight over. I can't schedule other people's vaccines. And that's where we're, we have to have our, our public understand as well is that as we go through this process, and mind you, everybody has to realize this is the very, very beginning of it. We're going to be at this for months, probably looking into October or around that time frame. So we have to understand we're going to be going through for, for months and months and months. So there's a reason why we have different all these different providers across the city is that they are points of distribution centers, points of places where people can get vaccinated because it, then you relieve that choke point of having one location or one provider trying to provide for the entire mass. We are not blessed uh, like other cities like San Antonio or, or Dallas or Austin who are shipping those mass quantities to these hospital systems and the hospital systems are the ones pushing out this this, 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 uh, uh, these vaccines to the general public. We don't have that going on right now. What's happening is the state has distributed them the way they, they thought was correct. Um, but the city is, is having to answer for how it was distributed and why we don't have enough of them. I can't answer that. That's only a state uh, answer. All I can say is from what we have, we're trying to get these partners to uh, all uh, report uh, their numbers uh, to us and so we have a running tally of how many that they have how many that they've given so then we can tell the public how many are available for these different sites I can tell you we've already done that exercise and as an example uh, most if not all of the HBs are running out or are completely out as an example uh, you have about 200 left at Laredo Medical Center uh, as, as, as another example and the list goes on and on and on. Uh, City of Laredo has zero. We've had zero for the last uh, week or so. Uh, and so with this uh, um, amended order, it will be that the, the partners are going to be uh, mandated to send us this list so that we can provide the, the public. And then as we get our, and I say we, the city uh, proper, get distributions to the city, we are then able to make appointments with those distributions. And so uh, we are getting uh, another batch of about 3,000 uh, from the partner that we used in the past, our little emergency rule. So knowing that we have control, full control over those, we're able to make appointments. But if Laredo Medical Center has 200 uh, doses left, I can't sit here, the city can't sit here and make appointments for them because I don't know who they're committing to, who they decided to give and that's what we're being told that's not our purview at this point uh, i'll step back from from and and let uh dr Trevino especially jump in and, and let him uh explain some of the intricacies but that's the challenge that we have is because we can set up a whole different system and we are with appointment systems but the appointment system that, that we're building and creating is for these new batches that are coming in and and we can go out with these three thousand and go out and distribute these, these the same way, but we're gonna have the same uh, unfortunate problem is that we have, uh, and we distributed 3,500 uh, doses this weekend, vaccines, and we probably had demand for 10,000. The math is never gonna work. So the demand is way greater than, than we're capable of providing. And 
Uh, we would love to give everybody in that line, line a chance to get a vaccine, but we just don't have enough doses at this point. We don't have, and so all we're doing is trying to set up everybody uh, in a, for, a, a fashion to be able to get them. And again, the, the challenge being that it's not quick. You don't drive up, you don't get a vaccine and you leave. You, you have to wait at least 15 minutes to be monitored. And so that causes further delay. So this process is not, you know, as quick as a, a drive through That's not what happens. You literally, this is like a doctor's visit. You will show up, you will be triaged by a nurse. You will have to put in information into the state system. Uh, you will then be administered your shot, and then you will be monitored for the next 15 minutes. And if you can imagine you've got a 1,000 cars waiting behind you as all this is happening, and mind you, we did this, and I'm going to give um, the, the accolades and, and, and thanks to the team that was on site, because if you had the chance, actually go on site and see how it was done, how methodical it was and how we had it uh, dispensed, it was a great system. Did we have enough? Without a doubt, we're still missing. We need thousands and thousands more. So until we start getting in the, the resources from the state, uh, we are gonna continue to have this problem. And all we can do is, is, is uh, keep continually asking uh, for resources for more vaccines, and we'll continually uh, keep pushing them out with our different partners, uh, either the health providers or school systems like LISD, UISD, LC, and the rest who we're partnering with right now. But again, thank you, Mayor. If there's uh, questions, I'll, I'll be here, obviously, to answer after Dr. Therese. Dr. Trevino, would you mind uh, responding to some of the comments that, that our city manager made, please? Sure, sure, thank you, Mayor. Of course, the idea is to streamline the vaccination process as we have been doing, uh, and to join with the resources of the city with the doses throughout the city. Uh, the vaccines belong to the community, as we have said before. And we want to make sure that everyone is eligible to get a vaccine that gets one. So the idea is to streamline the procedure, uh, probably get the forms that they have to be filled out online, if possible, consolidate the extra doses or the excess doses and uh, we can do this to a public health order. Uh, and the idea is to focus on what we can do to solve the problems. Uh, like we have said, this is new to everyone. We have never gone through this before. And I'm pretty sure everyone is trying to do the best that they can, but it is evident that some rules and some direction have to be present and more so transparency. This is what we're all about. Now, the other thing that we have to also keep in mind is the mandate from the Texas State Commissioner, Dr. Hellestad, and uh, all providers that have received COVID vaccine must immediately vaccine healthcare workers, Texans over age 65, and people with medical conditions that put them at a greater risk of severe illness or death from COVID-19. And the main statement is no vaccine should be kept in reserve. So we have to vaccinate as fast as possible and as efficiently as possible. And the only way to do it is to have some organization, some rules, and this way we can proceed I think, in a better way and to focus on how we can solve the problems. I would like to see if any, maybe Dr. Trevino, if you could say just a little bit of that portion in Spanish, because I do know that our media is asking for that as well. You're muted. You're muted. Se hace para tratar de hacer la, la, la forma de vacunar a la gente el proceso más fluido y juntarnos con nuestros recursos de la ciudad uh, y conforme las dosis que existen en toda la ciudad. Las vacunas le pertenecen a la comunidad, le pertenecen a la gente. Y queremos estar seguros que todos reciban, todos los que son elegibles para recibir vacuna, reciban una vacuna y que tengan una vacuna. Ahora, tenemos que estar en, tener en cuenta también que 
sabemos que todo el mundo está haciendo un gran esfuerzo y, y un esfuerzo tremendo. Y por eso mismo se necesita un sentido de dirección, un sentido de reglas para tener una estandarización de cómo vamos a hacer las cosas y enfocar en solucionar los problemas. Hemos aprendido mucho de esta pandemia y es la primera vez en toda mi vida yo que he visto una pandemia de esta magnitud y espero que también todos que están en, esta, en este video ahorita piensan lo mismo. Por lo tanto, estamos aprendiendo cómo hacerlo y esta es una de las cosas que estamos aprendiendo que necesitamos reglas, necesitamos dirección para cumplir eso. Y quiero enfatizar que estamos uh, tratando de luchar por todo mundo y toda la, vac toda la vacuna que se da pot potencialmente salva una vida o vidas. Y no solamente esa vida, sino salva las otras vidas que pueden afectar. Si todo esto es importante, si es que tan pronto que podemos vacunar a la gente lo mejor posible, es, es lo mejor. Y, y por último, una de las cosas más importantes que tenemos que tener en cuenta, que tenemos un mandato del Estado del Comisionado de Salud, y el mandato es del, del doctor Hellerstedt, que dice que todos los proveedores que han recibido la vacuna de COVID deben de inmediatamente vacunar a los trabajadores de primera línea y los tejanos arriba de 65 años y personas con condiciones médicas subyacentes que los hacen más disponibles a tener una enfermedad severa o la muerte de la, de la enfermedad COVID-19. Y por último, lo más, la frase más importante, ninguna vacuna debe de quedarse en reserva que no deben de tenerse vacunas guardadas para, para grupos de personas. Este es el mandato del Estado. Ahora sabemos que hay, uh, la CDC ha dado guianzas diferentes y recomendaciones diferentes, pero solamente son recomendaciones. Las guianzas, la, la, el mandato del Estado es lo que nos, nos afecta a nosotros. Y en línea con, con ese mandato vamos a, a hacer nuestras reglas y nuestro régimen de órdenes para que todos estemos en la misma página. Thank you, Dr. Treviño. Uh, Mayor, were you still wanting to make more comments? Uh, maybe in Spanish a little bit. Yo uh, rather thank you for the opportunity. Si el reto de nosotros es algo mucho, muy difícil, es, es la primera vez, como dijo el doctor Treviño, también en su vida él no ha visto eso y es un poquito mayor que yo, ¿va? ni yo tampoco. ¿va? Uh, So ya, ya entendemos la magnitud del problema que, que tenemos. Uh, en los últimos días uh, he recibido muchos, uh, muchas quejas uh, que ha habido que ven gente uh, tratada con más uh, preferencia, no, fuera del, del, del tier S de 1A y 1B. Hubo confusión. Uh, tuvimos una, una discusión con los uh, proveedores uh, precisamente antes de, de entrar aquí al, al sistema de ustedes. Uh, Uh, y, y, y estamos de acuerdo que el doctor Treviño va a sentar unas, unas reglas uh, por orden de él para todos ya seguir. Uh, unos de ellos estaban uh, confusos uh, por parte del Estado que a lo mejor afuera de en el, en la, en la clasificación 1B que podrían tratar otra gente, pero uh, como aclaró el, el doctor Treviño, eso no es y no debe de seguir. Uh, ya, ya no hay confusión, no debe haber confusión. Uh, así como uh, el municipio de Laredo ha estado instruyendo, uh, es, es como vamos a seguir. Y, uh, y se me hace que todos vamos a caer, a, a caer en, ese, uh, en esa línea uh, para seguir adelante. Uh, lo que queremos es, es eficiencia uh, y, y lo vamos a hacer también. Uh, Uh, estas vacunas, como dijo el doctor uh, Treviño también, son de ustedes, son de todos. Uh, no debe haber un grupo adelante del otro, a menos que el Estado nos haya dicho, y el Estado ha sido muy claro, uh, el, que, que es el, la clase 1A y la clase 1B. Y se me hace que ya tienen los, uh, la definición de eso. Uh, y hay que seguir eso también. Uh. El, el problema que tenemos como municipio también es que Uh, como proveedor, somos la minoría. Uh, nos mandaron 300 vacunas y, y a los proveedores uh, uh, 
privados les mandaron mucho más, que está bien, uh, pero tenemos que coordinarnos y tener estas reglas, porque si al caso ellos no pueden uh, con sus uh, dispensarios uh, a mover el, las vacunas lo más pronto posible, y eso a lo mejor no se requieren uh, no, horas normales, a lo mejor tendremos que empezar a las 7 de la mañana hasta las 10 de la noche, porque lo importante es vacunar, proteger nuestra gente, y, uh, y no hay que tomarlo como que es algo nomás normalmente de negocio, no, no, esta es una pandemia, y se requieren esfuerzos fuertes, uh, extraordinarios, uh, y es lo que queremos coordinar, y habiendo una vacuna, se tiene que vacunar, de una manera u otra, en que se, se tarde más tiempo o recursos y la ciudad está dispuesta a poner el, el recurso necesario. Es un sacrificio para todos nosotros, pero es un salvavidas. Uh, tenemos que salvar vidas. Uh, y, uh, y aquí no hay pretextos o no hay, uh, no, no, vamos a seguir las reglas y el que, y el que, hace, que haga su oponente. Yo no me he vacunado tampoco, uh, me voy a esperar hasta el último porque sé bien que, que hay mucha gente más necesitada. Uh, y vamos a ver que con estas reglas uh, estamos haciendo todo lo posible y estamos aprendiendo así como nos va pidiendo la, las circunstancias. Uh, pero lo que nos falta son más vacunas. Uh, y uh, ya si al caso los proveedores privados uh, se, se juntan con nosotros como socios que, que nos dicen que van a juntarse, entonces ya podemos tener más control nosotros como municipio, porque las llamadas no, les, no son necesariamente a ellos, son a mí y al city manager y al departamento de salud uh, y, y con derecho, hablen por favor, uh, porque se necesita este tipo de comunicación. Uh, pero también como municipio tenemos que saber qué está afuera, qué es el inventario y cómo van ellos también y que no se quede ninguna vacuna por, por no vacunarse. Uh, tenemos que hacerlo lo más rápido y lo más pronto posible, uh, pero entendiendo también que, que necesitamos más inventario, necesitamos más vacunas. Uh. Pero ahí vamos. Uh. Le agradezco a todos ahorita por lo pronto uh, que han hecho todo lo posible considerando las circunstancias que estamos viendo uh, en, en, en tratar de vacunar la gente, los proveedores. Uh, privados y también aquel departamento de salud con Richard Chamberlain. Uh, mis, mis gracias uh, por todos los esfuerzos, uh, uh, pero por lo pronto, si hay otras preguntas, por favor, uh, estoy dispuesto a responder. Gracias. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we do have uh, quite a few questions, um, obviously, with, with all this information that we just provided to everyone. Um, Uh, this first question is from KGNS from Alex Gano. It reads, many in line, uh, this is of course about the vaccination uh, the other day, uh, these three past three days. Many in line were people over the age of 65, some were in dialysis patients, some were diabetic and waited in line for hours. What are some changes that will be made in the next distribution to make sure those in health conditions do not wait in line for so long? Good afternoon, this is Richard at Laredo Health. Uh, that is a great question and that's something that we do want to avoid is that we don't want to have our most vulnerable sitting in line for hours on end. We are planning, of course, with the three entities that were mentioned by Mr. Eads a few moments ago to have a better system in place regarding specifically an appointment system where people will be able to sign up into the appointment system and that will, of course, provide them with a time slot. I would just say just out of, of, out of an abundance of a disclaimer that if we do open up that appointment system um, to have those 3,000 vaccines that they will fill rather quickly as well, but that will also guarantee those individuals a specific time and a location, therefore eliminating the number of other individuals that would then therefore be congesting the line or adding to the line. So that is a process that we are working on. And we are also very hopeful that within the coming days and weeks that we do have more of our chain pharmacies on board that will also be providing vaccines to the public by an appointment basis, as also here at the city of Laredo Health, providing an appointment basis for vaccines. Um, so please continue to follow us for any updates and we will continue to provide these mass vaccination efforts um, to the best and the betterment of the community. No, I, I did have one thing to add to that. Go ahead. Uh, I, 
I know in the last three days, um, we only had planned to do the 1B category till Monday. And we were only plan and we were planning to do the missing health care workers on Saturday and Sunday. But after during Saturday's event, we noticed that we had we opened it up to uh, over 65 year old uh, and 18 years old and older with comorbidity. So we we actually captured, I would say, 1500 of category 1B that we weren't expecting to capture. Uh, so I just wanted to point that out that we were able to capture 1500 1B category that we had not planned to capture. Thank you, Chief Hurt, for that. Um, this next question is from Maria Mendez. Uh, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, just, I, I had to chime in with that with what uh, Chief Hurt said and what Mr. Chamberlain mentioned too, because I, I want to make sure people will know uh, that like this past three days was not your only opportunity for sure. And then secondly, too, uh, we would always recommend, you know, getting with your primary care uh, physician, right? And so if you do have these very serious underlying issues that you stated with this example of this uh, diabetic who's on dialysis, uh, I would say reach out uh, before you get in the line, you know, or, or any sort of system, call your primary care physician, See if there's availability in one of the locations, but don't think the city of Laredo's uh, drives are the only avenues. That's precisely what we're trying to tell the public today is that there are more options out there. Please become aware of them. We've been pushing, we'll continue to push out these locations. The problem is that a lot of these locations to a great degree, almost entirely, have run out of the, these first uh, allocations. But just like what Richard said right now, Mr. Chamberlain was, we're hoping like the HEBs as distribution sites could provide that more quick, immediate service to these individuals. But if you are in those vulnerable, very vulnerable situations as well, we don't want you in line. We don't want you waiting. And so your, your doctor uh, may be able to find a solution for you faster than, than maybe a line in, in whatever uh, uh, place that is giving out vaccines. They may know of one of the hospitals that, that's able to provide one of the uh, medical centers, one of the clinics on the list. Um, so please seek out that resource. Don't, don't uh, think that that is your only avenue of, of a vaccination uh, ever. Uh, there will be more one and then two, uh, we do have other locations giving out and especially with those sort of uh, issues as well. So I know they've been asking for Spanish, but uh, Dr. Trevino or Norada Richard? We can keep going. I'm sure we can say something uh, along the lines. We do have way, way many more questions over here. Um, Maria Mendez is asking to clarify though on this, uh, you know, drive-through vaccine. Uh, were, were there were more than 3,500 vaccines all distributed at Tamiu Drive or also at some other sites and were all the vaccines were from Laredo uh, Emergency Room? This is Richard at Laredo Health once again. Yes, all 3,520 vaccines were provided at the TAMIU three-day event drive-through, and they were provided to us by our collaborating partner, Laredo Emergency Room. Okay, the next question is from Ms. Selin Gallardo. It reads, it's been mentioned that some providers interpreted the distribution rules their own way could you give an example of that? And maybe here is where we could do both in English and Spanish. Yeah, we heard from uh, some of the providers, but I, I'd rather you know, let them uh, you know, explain it, if you don't mind. Uh, uh, there's a few providers out there, and I think uh, you know, maybe the media can, can approach them. Uh, you know, I would hate to, to misconstrue further what, what, what they, they told us. Uh, but obviously there was a misconstruction or uh in their part based on possibly miscommunication from the state as well uh, so you know i let that be unless someone else uh, is is wanting to to add some more to that uh but but uh yeah that's that's my response I, i'll just add to that on um, that us as the city and with direction with tdem the emergency management system and the vicious we we have we coordinated today with some of the providers in a meeting previous to this 
and then we are going to continue coordinating so we can all be on the same uh, on the same uh, page to distribute the vaccines accordingly throughout the city throughout our cities. And we are getting constant guidance from from our, our from our through TDEM, which is the emergency management system, and also uh, dishes. Thank you both for the response. Um, the next question reads, the Laredo Health Department got 600 vaccines. Have they all been distributed? And if so, who got them? Good afternoon. Once again, this is Richard at Laredo Health. The Laredo Health Department did receive vaccines on December 23rd, 300, and on December 30th, 300. Those vaccines were allocated, of course, within those specific timeframes prior to Dr. Heller's stat adding the additional phase 1B to our health care providers in the community, which does include um, our medical examiner's office, our Webb County Jail health care staff, um, health care providers, which include our dentists um, and their office staff, of course, that, that support their dentistry, and our home health care workers. We do have 70 left in our possession, but as of tomorrow, of course, those have already been as by appointment basis filled for our home health agencies. And we are providing those to individuals that are 65 years or older or anyone with an underlying health condition over the age of 18 since the vaccines that were received at Laredo Health are Moderna. Okay, thank you. The next question is from Julia Wallace from LNT is um, strictly for either Dr. Trevino or Chief Heard. It says, do you know of any vaccines that have expired or have gone unused of the 14,000 allocated thus far? This is Richard at Laredo Health. I don't want to butt into Dr. Trevino or Chief Hurd's question for Ms. Wallace, but definitely we do have more contact with the providers here at Laredo Health, and we have not had any indication of expired vaccines being provided or being received within the city of Laredo, Webb County. Okay. The next question is, what exactly does this public health order is stipulating and when does it become effective? Yes, this is Dr. Trevino. Public health order will be in effect as of today. And it's an effort to set some rules as to how the vaccines will be distributed, allotted. And uh, this is in line to streamline the process and uh, consolidate the doses, the excess doses that may be at a certain uh, providers uh, place and uh, uh, to see if those doses can be better used to a provider that has more staff to administer them. Because as we have said, some providers may have a sufficient amount of doses or more than sufficient and not enough staff. And some providers may have a, a great amount of staff with very little doses. So the, the effort is to uh, share these doses and to provide the vaccinations as soon as we can. Uh, streamlining, streamlining the process is by linking the city's resources with the doses available in the other providers in the city. Can you repeat that in Spanish, Dr. Trevino? I'm sorry. Sí, el hecho de la orden es, uh, la orden de salud es para asegurarnos que haya reglas y un movimiento único en, en la misma dirección para que ser más eficaces en poder administrar estas vacunas. Ahora la orden prácticamente lo que hace es hace el proceso más fluido, uh, consolida las dosis que sobran en unos proveedores en la ciudad. Si le sobran dosis a, a un proveedor de vacunas y no tiene el personal para administrarlas Esas dosis se pueden alocar a otras entidades, otros proveedores que tengan el personal para administrarlas, pero no suficientes vacunas. O sea, esto organiza un poco más la cosa y se hace por medio de la orden de salud. Ahora, lo, una de las cosas más importantes es asegurarnos que haya un criterio uniforme a uh, que se siga y tomando tomando ventaja de los recursos de la ciudad con los recursos de los proveedores al mismo tiempo. 
Thank you for that response. The next question, um, it's in Spanish. It says, ¿Existe un parámetro para asegurar la segunda dosis de vacuna si es que se debe de usar en todos los inventarios? So if there is a parameter that exists for us to make sure that we have that second doses for all of these people in our inventory. This is Richard Laredo Health. Um, no, nosotros en el Departamento de Salud y también trabajando con todos los otros proveedores que se han aprobado por COVID-19, la vacuna de COVID-19, estamos esperando cuando nos mandan los dosis por los días, los, por los cantidad de días que necesitamos esperar. Por ejemplo, por Pfizer necesitamos esperar los 21 días. Después de, por, de voy a utilizar um, lo, el hospital, el hospital recibió Pfizer eh, um, allá hace tres semanas. So, los vacunas que ellos recibieron um, la semana pasada están para la para segunda dosis para la, para la, para la población que, um, que administraron la vacuna de principio. So, eh, en, en total, Nosotros necesitamos recibir doble o aumentar doble para vacunar um, nuevos agentes en la misma semana. Si no necesitamos utilizar las vacunas que, no, que nos están um, mandando en las semanas, por ejemplo, por nosotros en el Departamento de Salud, las va vacunas en nosotros recibimos en, en, en semana número dos, las vacunas que nosotros re recibíamos en um, semana seis y siete, um, uh, disculpe, sí, seis y siete, eso lo vamos a ut utilizar para las personas que recibieron dosis número uno. Pero si nos aumentan arriba de los números de 600 en esas dos semanas de seis y siete, podemos vacunar um, a más o nuevos agentes con la vacuna de, de, de COVID-19. So, es, en total, estamos bajo de los um, allocations del Departamento de Salud del Estado de Texas. I do have the same question in English, so if you can just repeat that, we get those two out of the way. Absolutely. So, regarding our second doses for, or specifically, uh, I'll just say that, share this also, for our COVID-19 drive-through that we did um, recently complete over the last three days, we will be organizing another event for those three days as we go into the 28th day for each one of these vaccines. But I will also share with the community, for those who did receive vaccine via our COVID-19 drive-through, and if we do have more availability of vaccines at our Walgreens, Walmart, CVS, HEBs, you are able to get your vaccine, your second vaccine, with any one of those entities, of course, making sure that it is the Moderna vaccine. But as I mentioned in Spanish just a few short minutes ago, using the hospital as an example, they did receive their Pfizer vaccine three weeks ago, and as of this Wednesday, they will be doing their second dosage. So they aren't able to vaccinate new individuals since they just received the same amount, 975, from their 975 from the first vaccines. So in order for us to continue to vaccinate more individuals, we are relying on the state allocations. So as the state provides us these allocated doses, we once they do go up, we are able to definitely be able to vaccinate more and more individuals instead of, of course, revolving back to the original set that is being sent to us. And that is the plan. That is a plan for us to receive more and more of the vaccine. So we're able to circle back around to the individuals that were first vaccinated with their first dose and still be able to vaccinate new individuals simultaneously. But that is still to be decided on the amount of allocation that we do receive via our COVID-19 providers in the city of Laredo and Webb County. Okay, thank you so much. The next question, it says, it is being said that the local government has no power over these providers distribution plans. If so, how can you be sure there is no hoarding or preferential treatment these are claims slash rumors that have been circulating and many of our viewers have been calling in with it. You muted there. Are you muted? Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you for the reminder. Uh, yeah, it's been a long day. Uh, yeah, I can respond to that. And this is precisely why I would need these these rules that Dr. Trevino is now instituting uh, as of tonight. Uh, this will will uh, force uh, you know these providers to provide that data, that information to us on a daily basis, 
so we'll know how much they had and how much they just they just spent what's what's the tally at the end of the day uh, so we in turn as a city can then be the the traffic cop so to speak uh, directing people that may call uh, the, uh, the health department or the city to say as of tomorrow morning uh, you know these uh, dispensaries uh, have have so many vaccines uh, so we can be of some help uh, now if, if for some reason these private uh, a dispensaries feel that that's too onerous or too burdensome will be will gladly take over that that responsibility because we have the infrastructure although it's been taxing and burdensome but again we're the safety net as a city uh, we will provide whatever is necessary to get those vaccines out in in a very you know, efficacious manner uh, and, uh, and 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 uh, and we're capable of that so uh, so anyway i think these new rules will address uh, these and and will show us that uh, the accountability and the transparency that Dr. Trevino is, is aiming for. Thank you. Could you repeat that in Spanish, Mayor? Uh, si la pregunta es, uh, uh, si, hay, si existe la posibilidad de que a lo mejor estos uh, proveedores uh, privados especialmente pueden detener uh, ciertas uh, cantidades o, o un, un inventario y precisamente por eso el Dr. Trevino está proponiendo y Ya al partir de esta tarde va a haber una orden donde va a haber reglas donde tienen los proveedores, proveedores privados especialmente, tienen que reportar, tienen que darnos información sobre la cantidad que, lo que, lo que tengan ese día para empezar y después al, al fin del día cuánto, uh, cuánto salió y, y qué es el balance si al caso llegó a ese punto que tienen un balance para ya después nosotros como... Uh, municipio propio, podemos responderle al público, ya cuando hable el público podemos decir, bueno, para mañana en la mañana, basándonos sobre este estos datos, podemos dar información al, al público y, y con la ayuda de ustedes también a lo mejor podemos a, a difundir esta información ustedes esa noche o esa tarde para informarle al público también a, dónde pueden conseguir estas vacunas el siguiente día a, y, y eso va a ayudar mucho también para para que haya fluidez, que se mueva la vacuna, porque no queremos a ninguno, uh, si hay vacuna, que estén nomás ahí esperando horas, uh, cuando fácilmente podría uh, vacunarse una persona y, 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 y salvar vidas. Uh, uh, y ese es el propósito. Gracias. No, no, I, I, I'd like to also add that while we cannot, uh, and this is guidance from the state, while we cannot uh, remove the vaccines from a provider. If we do know that they're mishandling the vaccinations, they did advise for us to report it to, to the state, to DISHES, and then they will remove the vaccinations and we'll work together. Um, and But the public health order, as mentioned by the mayor and Dr. Trevino, will help. But uh, if there is mishandling, well, we can advise the state and then they, they are the ones that can have the power to do that. You also tune on not either. Now, keep in mind that we're learning as we go, uh, and if we have to modify this order, Dr. Trevino, I don't want to speak for you, uh, but if it comes uh, through me, which which I think this order is strictly coming from you, uh, you know, we're willing to listen and 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 learn, uh, and, and as things progress and we learn from from what the future brings, uh, you know, at least I'm 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 very amenable to to adjusting those orders. You know, the goal here is to to as, as efficiently, as efficaciously as we can to get the vaccine out to, to the public at large. I mean, everyone, uh, there's no uh, preferred groups or whatever, unless they're specifically stated. Uh, and I saw a question there too, as a, you know, you know, what do you mean by preferential treatment? For me, and, and speaking for me, preferential treatment is anyone that uh, other than that phase 1A, which is healthcare workers and long-term care, uh, residents uh, and of course we there's a list of that and of course the, the city has been publishing this now for for some time now and also too is phase 1b which came in into play i think uh you know over the weekend and those are people over 65 years of old and people over 16 which at least with at least one uh, verifiable high risk of medical uh, condition and it and it lists those and again we've published this for some time now and uh, so it's been very clear from our standpoint now as, as to how others yeah, interpret that or, or what source they, they obtained it, it's really up to them. Uh, but from my standpoint and the standpoint of the city, and I think I, I feel 
uh, free to say that that the past is the past. We're starting fresh, and uh, and, and I want to assure the public that uh, there is accountability and there's transparency and there's order. Uh, primarily through this order that uh, Dr. Trevino has been, you know, will uh, sign, and I've, I've gotten the full cooperation of all the uh, providers, and 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 hopefully they'll remain. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. I have two more questions. One is, I've heard some concerns that the vaccines may be fake, giving to the confusion that we saw at the beginning with the rollout of the test. Could anyone address this? This is Richard at Laredo Health. I would absolutely dispel that accusation that those vaccines or our vaccines that we are providing to our community are fake. They are the real deal. They are vaccines that have been shipped directly to us from Moderna, and they are here designed to help our population combat the COVID-19 pandemic and get us to a point where we are able to have normality in the upcoming months. Thank you. Um, one last question, because the rest of the questions that we've had, we've had already answered them in, in one way or another. Um, for those who cannot leave their homes and are part of the tier of which will be 1B, for example, are maybe disabled, bedridden, is there going to be a way that the vaccine will be administered to them? And if possible, both in English and in Spanish. This is right. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Chief. <laughs> no, I can answer that, Noraida. Uh, we are currently working on a plan because we, we and Richard have been asked that uh, several times uh, in the last couple of days. We are going to be working with our local providers, such as our home health and our private ambulances, as we did with 815 Salinas and 700 Juarez that we vaccinated today. And we are going to, we will have a plan by the end of the week of how we're going to capture that ent entities. I, Vamos a trabajar con los grupos de las home health y las ambulancias. Porque esa pregunta nos han preguntado, nos han preguntado esta semana. Así como ayudamos los los residentes de 700 Juárez y 8815 Salinas. En la misma manera vamos a coordinar y vamos a tener algo listo para para fin de semana. I don't know if Richard has anything else to add on that. That was perfect, Chief. Um, I also want to share that there are home health agencies that have also applied to become COVID-19 vaccine, um, vaccine providers. So that will also help the effort out as well. Um, okay. Uh, actually, there is one more question just came in real quick. Uh, Mr. Heard, ¿existe una lista o un sitio para asegurar que un proveedor es legítimo? This is Richard at Laredo Health. Definitely the list that has been provided by the ArcGIS map by the Texas Department of State Health Services that identifies the providers in the community will let us know that. Um, so, para, para um, contestar la pregunta, um, le puedo decir que nosotros damos, um, o ya, ya compartimos la información sobre um, los um, locations, los ubicaciones de, de los COVID-19 proveedores aquí de vacunas aquí en la ciudad de Laredo. So, nosotros podemos decir si necesitas buscar esa página para ver si los proveedores son aprobados por el Departamento de Salud del Estado de Texas. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I don't have any other questions. So thank you so much to our media partners for attending this media briefing and just by helping us distribute the right information to our community. We will be sending the new order in just a little bit um, so that you also have that in your hands. Thank you so much. Have a good night.